Jesus was perhaps the best known person throughout all of history. So the question becomes, who was Jesus? So many people want this question answered. Who was Jesus? They start coming up with these different theories that maybe he was just a man, but he wasn't truly God. And then some people say that maybe he was truly God, but he wasn't really a man. Like maybe he just gave off this illusion that he was a man. Uh, when people saw him, they just thought he was a man, but he wasn't really a man. He was just God. Uh, these are different theories, and none of them are fully supported by Scripture. The, the concept that is fully supported by Scripture is this concept of the hypostatic union. This term, hypostatic, isn't actually used in Scripture, but the basic concept of it is used in Scripture. And it's the concept that Jesus was man, fully man, and he was fully God, unified as one. So then the question becomes, how is that possible? Isn't that a contradiction? How could he be fully God and fully man? Well, the truth is it's not a contradiction. I can be fully a son while also being fully a brother, right? Just because, let's say I'm an only child and my parents, they give birth to me, I become their son, right? I'm 100% their son. But then let's say they have another child. Now I am 100% that other child's brother. Just because I'm 100% that child's brother doesn't mean I'm not 100% my parent's son. In much the same way, when Jesus became man, he didn't stop being God. He was still 100% God, but when he became man, he became 100% man as well. Now this isn't some 50-50 rule. It's a, it's a complementing relationship, not a contradiction. So the question becomes, why did he do this? Why did God, the one who created everything, why did he become flesh? Why did he become man? Well, the truth is it's necessary that he do so if, it was, if he was to save us from our sins. He had to pay the price for our sins. And there are certain things that Jesus as a man could do that Jesus as God could not. And that seems you're like, whoa, 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 what are you saying? Jesus as God is omnipotent. How, how could he not do something that he could do as a man? Well, there's, there's things like Jesus being eternal, right? Jesus had no beginning. It says, in the beginning was the Word. And if you look up the context, it's talking about Jesus. That word, logos, mean is talking about Jesus. So, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So, we see that Jesus wasn't created, right? He was the creator. Anything that was created was created by him. He was that first cause. He was that necessary being that created all the other unnecessary beings like you and me. So it was necessary that he be eternal. But then the question becomes, if he's eternal, he has no beginning, that makes sense that he could have no end. How can something that has no beginning have an end? It doesn't make sense. At what point in its life did it end? It has no beginning. So it's, it's necessary that Jesus be man because Jesus as a man could die, whereas Jesus as God could not die. As God, he was eternal. He would always exist. He can't stop existing. But as a man, there was a time where he could die. He was mortal. He had a birth. He had a death. These different things are necessary. So as God, he was perfect. He was worthy to pay the price for our sins. But as Jesus, he could pay the price for our sins through his death on the cross. So we see that both things are necessary. If Jesus was only God, then he would be worthy to pay for our sins. But he couldn't pay for our sins because the wages of sin is death and Jesus can't die. But then as if he was only man, then he could pay for our sins, but he wouldn't be worthy to pay for our sins. So we see that he has to be both. He has to be both fully God and fully man. It is necessary, and the Bible teaches both. Right? The Bible teaches that Jesus had supernatural power, power that mankind does not have. So as God, he had supernatural power. As God, he had supernatural knowledge, knowledge that mankind can't have. But as man, he had limitations, right? He had to be born. He had to grow. He had to develop. He didn't come out of the womb just preaching and teaching. At least I don't think so. He still had to develop. It says he grew in knowledge, but as God, he's omniscient. So how does he grow in knowledge? The truth is he had access to all knowledge as God, but as man he still had to develop, he still had to grow. And he had all power, but yet we see him walking on water. Mankind can't walk on water. Mankind can't calm the storm. Mankind can't bring people back from the dead. Mankind can't heal a blind man just by touching them. All these different things mankind can't do, but God can do. So Jesus as God, he had this supernatural power, but as man he had these limitations. And we see in the story of Satan, when Satan is trying to tempt Jesus, he says, turn this stone into bread. Why did he ask him that? Because Jesus was hungry. Why was Jesus hungry? Because Jesus was a human being. He got hungry. And then Jesus refused to do it. So we know that Jesus had the ability to do it, but that doesn't mean that he always used his supernatural power to do things, right? So he had access to this, all this power, 
but he didn't always use it. In much the same way I think he had access to all knowledge, though he didn't always uh, use it. Uh, he allowed his body to grow, he allowed his body to develop, he allowed himself these limitations. He didn't always use all of his power because he wanted to suffer for us. He wanted to live a life that he could relate to us. He wanted to show love for us because it was necessary for our salvation. So Jesus was fully God and he was fully man. The Bible teaches both and it teaches that it is necessary for our salvation.